rejoice and be glad in it. We will rejoice and be glad in it. How about your week? Very good week? Give God a hand clap for this. God is such a good God. I couldn't wait to get here this morning to give him praise, to give him honor. He truly deserves it. Now, we're going to open up, we're going to have our deaconess, beloved deaconess, Diana, come up with a prayer of consecration. Praise the Lord. Touch somebody's hand. Where two or three are gathered in his name, yes, there he will be in the midst. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Begin to pray over yourself. Yes. As we go to the throne of grace. Yes, Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you with humble hearts, asking for forgiveness for every sin that we have committed, Lord God those knowing and unknowing sins. So right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, somebody needs you to be a fix in their life. Somebody needs a healing right now. Somebody needs mind regulation right now. Somebody needs a peace of mind right now. So in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we're casting down strongholds, Lord God. Anything that is going to keep us from serving you on today, Lord God, we serve it notice right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you will not have our joy, devil. You will not not take our peace, devil. Any spirit that is unlike you right now in this place, Lord God, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Anybody that's trying to come up against one of your servants, we rebuke them in the name of Jesus. We cast down any imaginations that may be coming up in this place. Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we are standing on your word because you said in your word that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we are standing Lord God, in the need of prayer, in the need of healing, in the need of strength. So right now, in the name of Jesus, whatever it is that you may be going through, Lord God, we pray right now that you would leave it at the altar. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Right now, Lord God, we're asking that you would raise up a standard in us right now, that we would serve you in spirit and in truth. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we're asking that your anointing will begin to fall afresh in this place, Lord God. Lord God, Spirit of the true and the living God rest, rules, and abides in this place, Lord God. We're praying for your anointing, Lord God, to have its way. Lord God, that you are sweet through this place, Lord God. Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, as we begin to praise your name on this day, Lord God, that your spirit will rest in this place, Lord God. Lord God, we pray for health right now. We pray for peace right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We're asking that you will order in your word, Lord God. We pray that you would allow the man of God to preach the uncompromising gospel, Lord God. That you will open up our eyes and our ears, Lord God, to be able to hear from you, Lord God. I pray that the Holy Spirit will give us wisdom on today, Lord God. I pray that, Lord God, you have your angels encamped in this place, Lord God. Lord God, I pray for the praise team that's going to sing unto your name. Lord God, not for any shape, form, or fashion, Lord God, but that you would get the praise, Lord God. Enemy is attacking you right now in the name of Jesus. We're gonna stand. 
Yes, yes. 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 Father. Yes. 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 Yes.
uh, wherefore it is also contained in the scripture, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Welcome to Mount Zion, where you will love here or what? Yeah. Ain't nobody gonna rain you off. Okay, our announcements are as follows. We have, I got it, I got it. We have Bible study every Wednesday at 7 p.m. We have new members class and Sunday school at 9.45 a.m. Second Sunday, women of Zion are asked to serve. Third Sunday is men of Abraham. Fourth Sunday is Z generation. <clears throat> On Tuesdays, we have noonday prayer from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Amen. 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 Um, Pastor speaking engagements on June 9th at 4 p.m. will be at Greater Mount Carmel Missionary Baptist Church, 6000 Terrell Road. Um, we ask that you wear your Mount Zion colors. <laughs> on this Saturday, June 8th, we'll have the women of Zion are going to painting without a twist at 6.30 p.m. at the Universal location. If you have not um, reserved your ticket, you could go online and um, purchase your ticket to join our private group. The password is Zion. Amen. Um, on June 16th, which is Father's Day, we'll be having a dinner for all fathers. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. If you know someone that would like to come with their kids on Father's Day, um, the women of Zion are preparing dinner for them. Amen. 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 On June 29th, it will be a legacy breakfast. That's for the mothers, uh, for the mothers board at 9 a.m. at the Golden Corral on Kirkman Road. Amen. Amen. Uh, in July, we, the men's fellowship will be deep sea fishing in clear water on July 13th. Yes, amen, amen, amen. They will be leaving here, I guess, <laughs> for eight hours. Amen. And then on, June, on that same day, the women of Zion are having game night right here at the church. Ow! At 7 p.m., we'll have communion uno, you know, connect four by two. <laughs> Okay, on August 3rd, we'll have our book bag giveaway. Amen. It's from, it'll be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Also, on that day, they will be having a pancake and waffle breakfast. They will have tic pre order tickets through the Palmer. So, it'll be a fundraiser for the First Family Appreciation. So, if you would, please, when they get the tickets, I'll let y'all know. But please purchase the tickets. The, the proceeds go towards the First Family Appreciation. Amen. Amen. Um, on August Third, oh no, I already did. Um, September 7th is the Women of Zion PJs and Tutus party. Woo! It'll be here at the church. I believe we're going to be making tutus. Um, it's for women only, 18 and up, no kids. Amen. <laughs> um, and um, um, September 15th, we'll have Men's Day at Warner Chapel. That'll be at 3 o'clock at 753 Comstock Road in Winter Park. Amen. Amen. Also on September the 21st, it's our third annual hats, gloves, and bow ties tea. The Leviticus edition. Amen. It will be at the Mark Street Senior Center. It'll be from 5.30 to 7.30. You can order your tickets on Eventbrite. They are $40. We'll have a best dress competition for the best dress male, best dress female, and the best dress couple. Amen. Amen. Also, we have the Intercessors Council will be available for prayer every third Monday at 7 p.m. So if you need prayer or know someone that needs prayer, please send them out. Lady Palmer and Pastor Palmer will be here. Amen. Amen. Um, do we have any visitors today? If so, please stand. Amen. 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 We just want to say thank you for worshiping with us today. Our prayer is that you will discover the limitless love that the Father has for you. Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church is a place of worship where we as believers will assemble through our faith in God, focus in Jesus Christ, and fellowship through the Holy Spirit. We want to say welcome for my pastor and First Lady Murray. Amen. Also, we have one more announcement. I'm sorry, I apologize. We have a meeting after church for the members. Um, it's regarding the First Family Appreciation. So if y'all could give Pastor Palmer 10 minutes of your time right after church, please, he'd appreciate it. Thanks. Amen. 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 That's it? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sister Judy. The Singles Ministry will be hosting a bowling event on last Friday in June. I think it's the 28th. So if you're single and you would like to join us, you can come out and join us that Friday. For more information, come to me after church. 
Amen. She says to the Be single and going to stay up and have a good time. Amen. Our fathers. Amen. All fathers, take pictures. You may place on the board. If you have any pictures of your father, uh, please place them on the board to help celebrate a Father's Day weekend. Amen. 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 Gotcha. We also are having a breast cancer awareness walk October the 26th and we're inviting um, everyone to come out that can and walk on that day. Okay. It's at Lake Eola. Lake Eola, October 26th. October breast the 26th. cancer awareness walk. Uh, please, please, please. We know that it is a major thing. Amen. Amen. We all need to take a part in whatever way that you can. Amen. Amen. I presume the color is pink. Yes, it is. Because you're in pink. <laughs> hey. Hey. Amen. Hey man, I, I know this sister Val did not promote the Holy Man Conference because she's not a man and I respect her too. Hey Amen. All her life. Hey Amen. But for the Holy Man of this world. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. August 31st, we'll be hosting our Holy Man Conference at 8 a.m. to 12 noon. We'll be at my bishop, Bishop Ronald Kimball's church, the Life Center over in Eatonville. Amen? Amen. 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 From 8 a.m. to 12 noon. Amen. 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 So all that can and will, we will have uh, RSVP information here in a little bit. I think I'll do the event burn. <laughs> you have anything, First Lady? Nothing? Amen. Amen. Some of you may not know, but First Lady's birthday is coming up. It's Tuesday, amen? Yeah, yeah. So I got I to tell this because I'm petty like that. But anyway, that's besides the point. Um, so I had to find a way to give her something different. So I started her birthday early yesterday. And I told her early in, earlier in the month of last month, she said she did not remember. But I told her we had to go to a meeting with the Palmers over in Tampa for some insurance information. <laughs> so I reminded her Monday, and she was hot all week. <laughs> Saturday. She wanted to say, you ain't got nothing planned for me on Saturday? <laughs> so I said, First Lady, we got to go and support them. They need us to be there with them. I said, we got to go. So she was a little timid most of the week. I must say, um, I'm glad the day is over. <laughs> so Saturday we drive down there. I had to use somebody, so I used the Palmer since they was gracious enough to let me lie on them. <laughs> Can't let everybody lie on you, amen? That's the word? That's the word. Oh. So we're walking down the pier, and she says, look at that. Look at that yacht. That's a pretty yacht. That's beautiful. So Sister Palmer says, why don't we go see what the tickets are? She was all in there. Let me tell you something about people. When they get one, they run with it. Dude. She got it all. She done calls the first lady early in the morning. The first lady, just wear a sundress. It's nothing big. We're going to be having an event. So that sealed the deal. I was good. So she's sitting there shaking her head the whole time. We get ready to go. <laughs> so we get there, and she walks up to where they're, they're hosting the tickets, and I pull out the two tickets. I said, we need to always uh, repeat the neighbors on the mirror. She goes, <gasps> <laughs> So I'm back in black. And God, I'm right. <laughs> So we had a beautiful time. It was a yacht cruise. I, I, I think we'll be going back again, I'm sure, as a church, because it's a beautiful opportunity. The food was phenomenal. Thank uh, the Lord. Thank the Lord. Very beautiful. You go out of the Tampa Bay area, you ride all around, and, and we just had a beautiful time. It was a beautiful time for her. Uh, I stopped by a little spot. I got down the way let her buy some. Yes. Yes. Let her buy some things. Hey, Amen. So we're not done. I'm, I'm going to work on some more stuff here in a little bit. Amen. Amen. So we celebrate you in your birthday month. Amen. Amen. With that being said, uh, any birthdays in June? If so, would you please stand? Amen. Amen. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to allow Brother Kim, if you want to say something to her son, it's his birthday.
Don't don't chew them out today. Get them after church. But go on and. No, you want to say something to y'all? No, we good. You say yeah. Come on, Noah. Come on, say something, Noah. Come on, say something. Happy birthday to my favorite uncle. Oh, his favorite uncle? Well, that comes with a price. I mean, you got to live right before him. You're the favorite uncle. Oh boy, you just stepped into that one. Your sister's really not the same with your brother. I'm going to say happy birthday. You know I love you. I give you a hard time because I love you and I want the best for you. Absolutely. Oh. You keep giving him a hard time, too. Every chance you get. Anybody? Know? Mother Natalie, it's your birthday? Stand up, Mother Natalie. Good morning out here, right? All right, we're going to sing happy birthday to you, all right? Come on, help me out, my school. <laughs> Forgiven. 
And how many know that tithes and offering isn't just about giving? What is it about? Value. Value. This is bring unto him the first fruit. The best of what you have. Uh, I would ask that if you have an electronic payment, you raise step to the rear, Brother James, or walk you to our fat mess earlier. If you might be able to give the spirit and the truth. And I don't know about you, but I'm, I like to talk a lot, but I like to give a lot, too. So if you know you like to talk a lot, you ought to be a big giver, too, right? Amen. So let's see what God would have for us today. He might bless the foundation of this ministry to our community as a whole. Ushers, if you will come.
altar. Bless those that give and bless those that couldn't give. Yes, so thank you. In your holy son, Jesus' name, we pray all men. Amen. Amen. And now we will have another selection from our choir. And then we'll have a scripture reading by our beloved brother Frank Alexander. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands, amen. amen. You're having fun this far. Good time. Amen. How excellent is thy name? If you know the song, please join in and help us. Amen.
Matthew chapter 4. Verses 1 through 4. That's Matthew chapter 4. Verses 1 through 4. Got it? Then Jesus was led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he was and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. And the last verse. And he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen. The Lord have a blessing to the reader and the hearers of his word. Announcement by Sister Gordon.
your Bibles, get your Bibles, get your Bibles. the book of Luke, the 15th chapter, I want to start with the 11th verse, the book of St. Luke, the 15th chapter, starting with the 11th verse, if you have it, please just stand for a moment for the reading of the word of God, the book of St. Luke, the 15th chapter, starting with the 15th verse. The 11th verse, I'm sorry. 15th chapter, the 11th verse. 15th chapter, the 11th verse. 15th chapter, the 11th verse. If you have it, say amen. amen. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, forgive me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered some of his things. All. Most of his things. All. All together. And took his journey into a far country. And there wasted, wasted, wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent some, most, and when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat. And some men, most men. No man. All men? No man. And no man gave unto him. <laughs> How many know God still take care of you? And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. He says here in the 18th of the pilot text, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. You may be seated. Giving honor to our God, to his son that died on Calvary's cross, to our comforter yet still, the Holy Spirit. To those who have visited us thus far, we pray you have seen and heard the Spirit of the Lord, and we welcome you. To the best church, my side of heaven. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we will love here, here. And nobody's going to run you off. Yes, to the pink in my Cadillac. <laughs> The chocolate in my syrup. Oh. <laughs> Would you have the other lady, Murray? <laughs> she gonna beat all y'all up out the church. Don't encourage him. But we're going to be strong. I promise we won't be long. We thank you thus far. I, 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 I ask God for a word from heaven that would apply to me first and then unto his people. Yes. And I pray that you will find where you might fit in in our text. We're just going to look solely at the 18th verse. <clears throat> but this is one of the passages that Jesus gave in a parable unto the people. And 18th verse says, I will arise and go to my father. 
and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. So if I had a way to encourage you this morning, I ask that you would well, well with me with your prayers, your amens, and your thank yous. And say, Pastor's going to preach about. Pastor's going to preach about. I gotta go. I gotta go. Boy, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> For many times in this particular text, you would find the Bible starts off at 11 verse saying that a certain man uh -huh. had two sons. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And the Bible specifically is letting you know that this was a man of a certain faith. Mm -hmm. He was sure who he was as a father, he was sure who he was as a man of God. And he was not wavered, no way, no how, by no person, no place, or no thing. Uh, he knew how important it was to stand in the spirit of God no matter how much comes against or, or with him. Amen. He began to look at this text and realized that his son, who was the younger of the two, and by Hebrew law, the oldest son got two-thirds or whatever was left of the father. And generally it was given after his death, not before. And every son after would get one third thereof what was left from the two thirds. Well, well. And somewhere along the way, this young man decided that I won't mind now. And sometimes in our Christian world, we don't want to wait on God for nothing. We want what we want now. I want what I want now. I want it fixed now. I want it right now. And God is saying that under the realm of where he abides and provides, you have to start understanding that to be in position with God, you must first be willing to be in position with God. Uh, this particular text reminds us how important it is that even with everything you might gain, you still going to have nothing. I know a lot of people. I've met them over the world. I've had the chance to be uh, involved with people of many, many classes, if you will, of economic scale. I've seen people that had more money than they ever would spend, and they were the most miserable people I ever met. But I've met some folk who ain't have a dime to do. They couldn't rub two niggas together, and every time I see them, they had a smile on their face. They were joyous in their heart. They were thankful for the little bit they had. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Some of us had some grandmas and great grandmas, some granddads and great granddads. They didn't have much, but what they had, they enjoyed it. They sit on the porch and just rock back and forth and said, Oh, what a beautiful time it is to know God. Some of us right now got a flat screen in every room, including the bathroom. And we're just as miserable as God can let us be. Some of us got extended warranties on our cars. They're so new, we don't know what to do with it. And I see a guy pushing a car out of the road with a smile on his face. But what would cause such a shift in this young man's demeanor? What would, what would cause him to believe that what he had at home wasn't good enough? What would cause him to say, I got to go? This ain't working for me. Though everything was provided for him, though everything was given to him, though he had honor, he had the ring, he had the robe, he had status, he had all that you could ask for in his father's house. Right, right, right. So much right now. We done made you everything you could be. Well, And you still ain't here. Some of us, God done gave everything he could give you that you could handle. And you still ain't happy. Some of them say, well, you know, it'd be nice if I had a clean slate in my medical record. Well, God said, look, I got you through the medical problem. You're still here breathing and talking at you. You ought to just wave your hand and say, Girl, I hear what you said, but child, I know what he done for me last week. Thank God he got me out of that doctor's office. Thank God I ain't taking as many pills as I used to take. Thank God I can now remember a little bit what's going on around me because all them drugs got me... I'm not watering down what's going on with you. I'm just saying God has done a beautiful thing in me. I had a blessed opportunity the other day to go into a neighborhood where the 
average income is less than $12,000 a year. A year. A year. That's for all of us who drive in cars bigger than $12,000. That's me. Amen. We've lost the essence how important it is to be grateful for the little things God has given us. Can we be transparent this morning? I ain't going to get too many amens, but that's okay. My wife came with me. We have got to start giving honor to God for just the little things he's allowed us to have. Because it's going to come a day where all that you had won't matter. It will not matter. All the things you have obtained, all the plaques on the wall, all the accolades been given won't matter. They will still walk by you in a nursing home as if you're not there. They will still forget to call you yes. on your birthday. Yes. Amen. It's going to come a day. Amen. So if I'm going to be in a place of quote-unquote loneliness, uh -huh. then I might as well just start hanging with the Lord now. Yes. Yes. Then I if or when my time comes that man forgets about me, forgets about all the stuff I went and helped them do, all the stuff I helped them come out of, all the stuff I helped them be a part of, I can still have the Lord whisper my ear and say, D, you're doing well. Don't worry about it. I'm here with you. I'm holding your hand. I'm wrapping my arms around you. You are not alone. You don't got to go to a place of depression. You don't got to go to a place of feeling sorry for yourself. Just trust in me and I will take care of you. Is there anybody this morning that can agree that they were in a place sometime in their life when they didn't think things were going their way, when they thought they were all by themselves, and all of a sudden, the Spirit of God showed up and showed up. Tell your neighbor, get your joy back, get your joy back. Get your joy back. There was a time y'all had a joy to hear the Spirit of God. You were excited that God was telling you that you were going to be all right. But all of a sudden, I let my situation outweigh my salvation. Somewhere along the way, I got distracted. Do you know why he says that the road is narrow? Can I go a different direction? It's not just there because it's it's more. Uh, it, it, it is not a lot of room for error, but it's really to remind you how important it is to be focused. The wider the road, the more you start thinking left and right. So God said, "I make this road narrow, that it forces you to focus on what's in front of you, not to the left, not to the right, not what's behind you." I don't care what's going on behind your back. God already got it covered. I try to tell people that so many times when I'm crying because God has shown me something about someone that I can't help them with. And it hurts my heart mm -hmm. to see that person in a position where they have gotten so caught up that they don't realize they're refusing God's love. And that hurts when you've been given the task to help them see God's love. And it hurts to see them continually self-mutilate themselves over and over and over again. That no matter where they could go, they continue to look for a road that leads to destruction. It's not they don't know what's right and what's wrong. They struggle with what's righteous because they're not hearing from God. So Luke brought it to our attention. Can I get to the text? Let me get out your way. 
In verse 18, he says, I will arise and go to my father. I got to go. And there are three things that I'm going to go for. He says, I will arise and go to my father. First of all, if I'm going to go, I got to go with my problems. Many times our prayers have nothing to do with our problem. The real problem. Our problem are laid around material things. Aww. It is. I pray for a house, but I ain't ready to make it a home. Aww. All right. Preach. And God is saying, you have to go to the root of what you're asking of me, because once I lay it out, it is what it is. Yes. And I always tell people, be very careful what you're asking of God, because though it may seem free, it comes with a price. Yes. There ain't nothing you're going to give up. Nothing that you're going to get that you ain't got to give up something. All right. All right. And so many times in our lives, we've, we've been able to memorize a few songs and some scriptures. And then we've given to manipulate our way through how we want God to do something for us. Yeah. But I stop by to tell you the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. He does not change how he operates. He's going to take care of you, but it's going to come with a price. All right. All right. All right. Yes. Amen. So look at the text. He says, I will arise. Yeah. Will you? Yeah. All right. yeah. Will you get up for God? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I know you get up when somebody hurt your feelings. Uh -huh. But will you get up for God? All right. Praise God. Yes. I know you get up because you need to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. But will you get up for God? Because he's saying here, I will arise and go to my father. Yes. Not nobody else. Not my cousin and my aunties and all them. He's not even saying coming to your pastor or your leaders or your sister or your brother. He says, I will arise and go to my father. Because if I get up and go to God, he's going to set my mind, my heart, and my mouth in place. That when I get up, it's going to have a purpose to be fulfilled. Yes. How do I go to the problem solve and still have a problem? How? How do I go to a God that says, I will take care of you, and I don't feel taken care of? Now, God said that he be true and every man be a... Okay, I know y'all ain't going to read out. I don't lie. Okay. Misrepresent the truth. Um... Not accurate in your details. Uh, misunderstood what you meant. Uh, whatever you want to call it, it don't matter to me. At the end of the day, when I go to God, then I can do what God would have me to do. And I stopped by and encourage somebody this morning that if you're going to go and arise to the Father, go with him with the problem of saying, God, I don't care how you solve it, you just solve it. It's not my will, but your will. Whatever you say, do, I will do. Whatever you want me to do, I'm willing to do. Wherever you want me to go, I'm willing to go. Wherever you ask me to serve, I'm willing to serve. What is the problem with us as people? We got everything to say, but nobody wants to serve. Child, they, ain't got no, they ain't got no paper towels in the bathroom. Did you buy any? I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. The Spirit of God ain't up to you. He was over there at the wind and the Dixie to grab an extra roll of toilet paper and bring it in. Or the paper towels and bring it in. The, 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 the Spirit of God ain't up to you to do anything for anybody. Is it always about what you need, what you want, what you desire? That's why we have problems. Because everything we do is for us. Because no matter what I do for you, that's still your problem. That ain't my problem. I just helped you with your problem. You are the oldest person in your problem. Even if I'm older than you. You're the oldest person in your problem. So then he says, if I'm going to go, he said, I will sing unto him. So now he's saying, I will arise and go to my father, 
I must go with my problem. Then he says, I will say unto him, now I must go with purpose. What good is it for me to go to God with a problem without seeking him to take care of it? Hence the problem. I go to God with a problem, then I go fix it myself. Yes, we do, Reverend. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, sir. That's okay. Yes, we do, Reverend. I go to God with a problem, then I let me take over. Because you know, can't nobody do it better than me, Jack, by me, right? And then I wonder why at the end, why am I sitting there with still the problem now has grown and manifested with a head bigger than it was before I started. Well, the Bible clearly says that even when you go to clean yourself up, the enemy leaves and comes back with seven more powerful than itself. So now instead of one problem, you got eight problems. And I don't know about you, I didn't come to be with God to have to battle all this stuff by myself. I just learned to humble myself down, sit myself in a position that God will take over the situation because I believe in the salvation that he died on Calvary's cross, rose on the third day with all power, and coming back again soon. Ask your neighbor, what's your problem? Then say, what's your purpose? Then he comes at the end. I'm telling you, I'm getting out of here quick today. He says, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Can I educate for a minute? I really hope you'll get this. If you think I'm talking about you, you're exactly correct. You ain't got to talk to nobody in the windows and say, I think you. No, if you think I'm talking to you, you're absolutely correct. I'm talking to me too. Amen. Look what he says here. He says, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before thee. Uh -huh. Here's why I can't go. I go to God with the problem. I go to God for a purpose. But I don't go convicted. So to go to God without conviction, you go to God without conversion. And there is no conversion without conviction. Amen. So if you decide you want to go to God angrily about what some person, place, or thing has done to you, and don't go convicted to self-evaluate your part in the problem. Amen. Let me tell y'all. Can I help somebody? I just got this from God. Guys, it doesn't matter who's right and who's wrong. That's right. Amen. It's about what's righteous. That's right. Our problem as individuals is we want to be right all the time. Yes. All the time. Amen. Preach back. And there are a lot of times we are right. But we aren't righteous. God ain't talking. We talking. God ain't doing, yes. we doing. Yes. Yes. I didn't expect no help. That's okay. Because he says, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And when he, when he separates that sins, I've sinned spiritually. And then whatever I have done or said before others and before myself is thee. Heaven and earth saying, man, what are you doing? Yes. So now, I go with my problem. I go with my purpose, and now he says, I got to go with a promise. Uh -huh. And that's where conviction comes in. Conviction says that though I might think I know scripture a little bit, I should still be trying to learn. That though I, though I got some things figured out, I should have a humble spirit to say, God, you're talking to me today, even if I don't think you're talking to me today, because I know you're talking to me today. And so many times in our lives, we have lost. I was talking with our leaders this morning in a leaders meeting. We cannot be great if we're not grateful. 
And that's what's wrong with us as Christians. We're not grateful that God woke us up this morning, touched our eyelids with the finger of love, helped us get up this morning, work it out to be where we're supposed to be, say what we're supposed to say, and believe what we're supposed to believe. Because we got degrees on the wall, name tags on the office door, cars and houses and everything else, saying we good, when in reality we all our way to hell. And five people can't even say Amen. you're worthy. Amen. You got more folk than you done hurt than you done helped. And the enemy saying, everybody got a problem with you. That's the spirit. And I thank God that I'm in a church. Well, that spirit can't dwell here. It ain't welcome and it ain't invited. Whatever the problem is, you better fix it. Because if you don't want me to get involved, I will get involved. And I do like Solomon. I cut it right down the middle. You're going to take half and you're going to take half in this problem. I know, I know, I know. I know. You didn't take all that. You didn't have to do that. That's, that ain't God talking. That's God talking. I, I've been crying since I got up this morning. And so, I want to help y'all this morning. He says that I will arise and go to my father. And I don't know about you, but sometimes enough is enough. Sometimes you're saying, I can't keep doing what I'm doing no more. And I got to go to a place where I can feel the spirit of God. And I don't know about you, but sometimes just sitting in a corner ain't good enough no more. I don't know about you, but Sometimes playing the record player to the record player won't play no more, don't do it no more. Sometimes you gotta say I need something more than just getting by on a phone call in the late night hour. Uh, sometimes I need a little bit more than a bottle and a bag, if you know what I mean. And sometimes I need more than some gossip on the gossip line. Sometimes I need God to put his hands on me. Cause I heard by the one called Jesus, the one that said he loved us all. But I want to tell you to finish the story to Luke 15. They said that the son realized that his ride and his living was wrong. But the Bible said that he came to himself. Sometimes in your life, you got to learn to come back to yourself. Because if you really start looking at what's wrong with you, you realize that you're the major problem in your problem. Now you can blame some things that people said to you wrong. And you can blame some things that people did to you wrong. But when you really start looking at what God is in your life, can't nobody do me worse than I can do myself. But the beautiful thing about the guy was, he began to realize that he had some problems in his life. And he said, well, God, if I go home, Will you still accept me the way that I am? Will you take me, Lord, if I'm a liar? Will you take me, Lord, if I'm depressed? Lord, will you take me all jacked up? Because I can't do this no more. I got to go home to my father. Sometimes, when you all tore up inside, we need God to clean you up. Watch you water this stone. You got to look toward the cross where all your help going to be. They tried to do it on Jesus. Live from judgment hall to judgment hall. But I heard that same God didn't say nothing evil. Kept doing what God had him to do. Ask yourself, when's the last time they called you all these things and you still kept it with God? Ask yourself, when's the last time you felt yourself tearing apart, but you still held on to God? Sometimes 
You have to be willing to make a walk. Let me tell you about a walk above all walks. I heard that it had a cross some 300 pounds. Walk this road some 200 yards. But I heard hey! people laughed at him and pointed out his fair fangs. But I stopped by to tell you, when God cleaning you up, it's okay to look a little messy, cause you know where you're headed to. Ain't nothing better when I got a whole load of clothes, and I'm headed to the laundry room, cause I know what's going down. Though my clothes might be dirty, got a little smell to them too. But once I throw them in, drop that detergent in. When the Holy Ghost gets involved, it washes wider than snow. Shakes it up, turns it around. You know how it is. Sometimes you gotta try it all up too. See, mama, before she had a dryer, she used to hang the clothes out on the line. She got that clothes pin, one for the father and one for the son, one for the Holy Ghost and one for the father and one for the son. And one for the Holy Ghost. Does anybody remember that they did it all for God? But I heard when he hung on that cross, he said, I still gotta go. He took a nail in one hand, he said, I still gotta go. He took a nail in the other hand, but he said, I still gotta go. Y'all know him, don't you? The wheel in the middle of the wheel. Y'all know him, don't you? The rose of Sharon. Y'all know him, don't you? Ah! I'm talking about Jesus, that great man of God. Sat on that cross, but they stressed him wide, and they held him up high. There he sat from the sixth to the ninth hour. Seven power sayings. Y'all know him, don't you? That great man of God dropped his head. Down in the lumps of his shoulders, I heard, I heard he died. He died. He died. Ah. Yeah. yeah. Died on the cross. The key wasn't over yet. I heard he went down to hell. He said, I still gotta go. Sometimes you gotta take your stuff, get it back from the enemy. You took my joy, you better give it back. You took my sickness, now you can have that one now. You try to take my depression, you can have that one now. But I feel ain't nothing wrong with my mind. I'm alright, I can hear, I can see, and if I can't do it in the natural, I can do it in the spirit. Is there anybody this morning that said, I will, I will arise, stand up, say yeah, 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 yeah. All day Friday, that said, I still gotta go. All day Saturday, he said, I still gotta go. Saturday night, he said, I still gotta go. But I He got up, he got up, and you believe that you've been washed whiter than snow. Get up, grab your neighbor, tell him, sis, bruh, you gotta go, leave your problem, get your promise, yeah, yeah.
Can I do somebody today? It says this all makes sense to me. Maybe some of us are too self-righteous to see it. Maybe your word ain't on here, but it's on here. Somebody's saying, I want to come and accept the Lord as my Savior. The person is you, won't you come? But there's still time. Maybe they're saying, you know what, I... I know the Lord for myself, but I don't have a place of accountability. I need a church home. This new world order says, oh, you don't need nobody to be over you. But God over you. And if he send you somewhere, he got a purpose for you. Won't you come? Wow. There's still time. Yeah, yeah. 
Bible says that Jesus asked the disciples to go into the upper room and prepare what would be the last supper that they would deal with him in his natural flesh. Yes. For when he returned, he had a new body. Yes. I would ask that you can muffle a prayer over the bread and the cup. <coughs> Gracious Father God, we thank you again for this beautiful day. Thank you, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for the communion, the representation, Father God, of your body. The representation, Father God, of your blood. May we take and partake and repent of our sins. Cry out to you, Father God, that our souls may be saved. We will forever, Father God, be grateful for who you are in our life and serve you until we die. For the Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
the bread is the reputation of the body being broken at the cross. Please break it. The cup, representation of the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. Take it and drink. Amen. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. How I many of you may be seated? How I many heard from the Lord today? Yes. Hey, is he not worthy of all of our praise? Amen. 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 So we thank God for this day. We know that it's all by his honor. Before we leave, I wanted to offer an opportunity to some good friends of me and my wife. If they would like to say anything, we'd love to hear from them. My brother? Well, thank you, thank you, I'm just glad to be here. I really felt the spirit. And I, I a lot of people don't know, but I've known you and your wife for many, many, many years. years. <laughs> and, and I want to say this. Great people. You've always been a, a man of positive faith. I've known you way back since you were much younger. Both of you much younger. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. 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 I just go where the spirit moves me. I got up this morning and I thought about what you said last time we met. Uh, it was silly, a donation thing. And, uh, and I said, you know, the spirit says to go to church. And that's the way I do things. I read the Bible every day. I, I, I study, I pray. But sometimes I just get up and say, I'm going to church today and I go somewhere. Amen. And I feel this message and I got a wonderful message. Amen. I've been blessed. Many times, many different ways by God over the years. Amen. And so I thank you for all those things. But you said a powerful word, and the fact that no matter how much you've done, what accomplishments you made, yes, none of it means anything if your spirit ain't right with God. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. You ladies, okay? <laughs> Amen. Oh, but St uh, Benza Steele, bless you. Amen. Me and her have known each other for many years. Before they started all of the things you see now, Benza Steele and I worked together for almost 20 years ago. We brought up the concept of what um, some of the music, how it corresponds within spirits of the children. Yes, sir, yes, sir. And she had a DVD and we went around and we went together. And I would even closer being a preacher then. Yeah. But she still saw enough in me to use me. Amen? Amen. 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 As I get older, you'll find out things about me, but don't judge me. Amen? amen. For my past is my past. My past. Amen? Amen. 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 We all got them. Amen. Um, do you have anything, darling? Amen. And I got to give honor to my brother once again. My wife worked in the jail. And she reminded me of a time that the inmates were real rowdy that day. And they were looking to attack her. And he came in and cleared the whole room. <laughs> he used to be a professional body, I mean, a, a weightlifter. We had what we call the police Olympics and all that. He won every year. I mean, 600 pounds, 700 pounds. He played with it like his hand. <laughs> this brother had strength like Samson. You hear what I say? But he had the humble spirit the whole time. He was just as calm and cool and collected. And he was well respected, not just by his co-workers, but the inmates as well. Amen? So we give honor to you today for all that God has let you do. Amen. Of all hearts and minds are clear. Amen. Um, I'm told we have to leave. Yeah, but they told the church needs to do something right quick after our absent. So we thank you for all that have come today. Please, 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 those of us who are here, um, I know she didn't want me to do it, but I got to do it. This is Brother Don's wife. Raise your hand. They need to know, sis. Amen. Yeah. They need to know. They need to know. Talk about me out the church, but they need to know. Because I don't do that up in here. Amen. 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 He has a wife. Praise God. 
thought I saw somebody on Facebook. I didn't want sure. And now you know. Amen? Amen. Are we not in a great place of love? Amen. Amen. We thank God for all he said and done. We ask for your prayers. Please, uh, let's try to make sure uh, we're looking out through our sick and shut in where we can. Uh, Malika, good to see you come in today. Amen. Amen. The God is special, is it not? So let us stand. Let the church say amen. by Mommy Dearest. Somebody before you leave today.